Dr. Romano, it looks like you're up to physics again. Hi, I'd like to go over a concept known as torque today. This is a question that most students have a great amount of difficulty with. First of all, before we start, what exactly is a torque? Torque is the product of force times distance. But you got to remember something, that force is applied perpendicular to the surface. Let's look at an example. If I have a beam and I apply a force perpendicular to the surface, there's the force, and as you can see, it can either rotate clockwise, or if I apply a force perpendicular, it can go counterclockwise. Now, depending on your physics teacher, we can call clockwise plus or negative. So for, the, for our questions, we are always gonna consider clockwise rotation, meaning the torque that's going clockwise is going to be positive. Negative rotation means going counterclockwise. All right, let's have an example of what I'm talking about. Let's take a look at this crowbar, and we have a 100-pound rock. It's sitting on the left end. You got the crowbar, which weighs 15 pounds. Here's the fulcrum. The whole distance is six feet. Notice it's 1.5 feet to the left and then 4.5 feet to the right. And I want to know what force must be applied to the very end of the six foot long crowbar to support this rock. So it sort of, it sort of gives you the idea like a seesaw type of thing. Now, in order to do problems on equilibrium, there's three conditions that must be met. Let's review them. The sum of the forces in the x direction must equal zero, the sum of the forces in the y direction is zero, and the sum of the torques equals zero. The first thing that I do is I'm going to draw a free body diagram of all the forces. Let's do it together. Well, at the far left is 100 pounds. Weight is going down, so that's going down. Then you have the force of the fulcrum. I'm going to always assume that's an upward force. Then you have the weight. And this is a little tricky. It weighs 15 pounds. Since it's six feet, I'm going to put it three feet from each end. So that means that this is three feet. Be careful. And if this was 1.5 from this picture, that means that distance must be 1.5. So you had to be a little careful. We want to know what force must be applied at the opposite end. Say it's another rock. So I'm going to assume that that force, which I'll call P, is pushing down at the far right. All right, where do I begin? After I draw my free body diagram, I first go for my first rule. The sum of the forces in the x direction is zero. If you look with your eyes, there are none. There's nothing going on in the x direction, so move on. The forces sum in the y direction equals zero. Well, what do you say? Down, down is negative, minus 100, up for the force, plus F, minus 15, minus P equals zero. Clean yourself up. You get minus 115, minus the P equals minus F. You could have rearranged it differently, but there's my first equation. Now, the next thing is the hard part. What I have to do is the sum of the torques must equal zero. Now, watch how I'm going to take a torque. I always like to take a torque. Now, the way I taught my students years ago is always take a torque at the fulcrum. So what I do is I get my finger and I make it look like the fulcrum. Notice from here to here is 1.5, and this is the rest of the distance. You get your finger, and you see what happens. If you push down with the 100, it's rotating counterclockwise, so it's minus. And the distance to the fulcrum is 1.5. So it's minus 100 times 1.5. Since you started at F, don't worry about F. That doesn't count. You look at the next force, that's the 15. You go to the middle and you push down and you physically see what's happening. It's rotating clockwise. And the distance from where you started the, the torque from is 1.5. So that's going to be 15 times 1.5. And then how about P? P is at the end. So it's pushing down, so clockwise again, and the distance to the fulcrum is 4.5. So you put your numbers in. Clean yourself up. You get minus 150. This is 22.5. 4.5p is zero. 
and that allows you to solve for P, which is 28.3 pounds. So that gives me the needed force that's to cause equilibrium. Then, once you know P, you can go back to this equation and simply solve for the force, and we get minus 143 is minus F, therefore 143.3 pounds equals the force. I hope this helps. It seemed a little bit hard, but keep in mind, if you could do your three things, some of the forces in the X direction is zero, some of the forces in the Y direction is zero, and take that torque um, that's got equal to zero. Always take a torque at the fulcrum, because that would essentially knock that fulcrum force out, and therefore you could solve for what you need. But you could take a fulcrum, you could take a torque in any other position, but always try to take it if you could at the fulcrum and solve it accordingly like this, and physically feel what's happening. So before I let you go, one more time, if this was the fulcrum, if you push down this way, or this way is clockwise, if you push this way, you go counterclockwise. Wow, Dr. Romano, I love that example. I'm going to practice this. Thanks for making this uh, problem seem so easy. All right, good day to you. Bye-bye. Good day to you, Dr. Romano. I'm going to go get a snack now.